Jenny. Seriously, you good-for-nothing blockhead. I can't even wrap my head around how lazy you can be. I mean, come on. Are you intentionally trying to show your opposition towards your dear old mother-in-law or something? It's just beyond belief. Elise, you're being completely ridiculous right now. I swear, I'm not doing a single thing to provoke your anger. Why must you come at me like this? I thought you were supposed to be my mom, for crying out loud. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So now you're speaking against my words, huh? Is that what's happening here? And yes, you're absolutely right, you're doing nothing is precisely what gets under my skin. How can you be so utterly useless when it comes to this house? You came here to be my daughter-in-law, for goodness sake. And what exactly have you done to contribute to your own family? I'll tell you, nothing. Absolutely nothing. All you seem to do around here is eat and sleep. Hold on for a second, Elise. That's not fair at all. I do contribute in my own ways. It's not like I'm just lazing around all day. I take care of things, I help out when I can. It's not easy being a part of this family, you know? Oh, spare me the excuses, Jenny. I've seen it all, and frankly, it's not impressive. You think you're fooling anyone? I'm just stating the facts here. You need to step up and take some real responsibility. This family deserves more than just someone who eats and sleeps. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, because I believe in telling the truth, plain and simple. Well, maybe your version of the truth is a bit skewed, Elise. I'm not denying that I have room for improvement, but you're making it sound like I'm the worst person on the planet. Can't we have a conversation without resorting to insults and accusations? Don't try to act like a pathetic victim. I'm too familiar with your stupid games. You're a stubborn, ignorant, and arrogant daughter-in-law. All I know is just that. No. You're having a really big misunderstanding about me. I've never had this thought in my mind. On the contrary, I'm doing everything I can to support this family. I am the one who takes care of all of your household chores. Cleaning the floor, mopping the house, washing the dishes, doing the laundry. All of them. But you're never satisfied with what I've done. You're always finding ways to make me feel humiliated and embarrassed. Don't you think that it's a little bit too much for me? Are you really seeing me as your daughter-in-law? Why the heck would I have to care about you? You're nothing but a filthy woman. Your inferior background is throwing dirt on our faces. Actually, you need to feel happy and grateful to the one that lets you enter this house, instead of being stubborn like that, don't you think? You just never seem to get it, do you? I'm so tired of dealing with your unreasonable attitude all the time. And you know what? It's not like I have it easy either. I have to work despite the fact that I'm struggling with an illness. Illness? What are you talking about? You've never mentioned anything before. Well, I've been dealing with atopic dermatitis. It's a skin condition that makes my skin super sensitive and causes a lot of discomfort. It's been really tough on me lately, and I guess you wouldn't even bother to understand. You're just so self-centered, always finding joy in dragging others down. How dare you say that to your own mother-in-law? I'm your husband's mother, for goodness sake. The least you could do is show me some respect. And mark my words, I have no responsibility whatsoever when it comes to your so-called stupid illness. It's not a stupid illness, Elise. It's a real condition that I'm struggling with. But why would I expect you to understand? You're too busy judging and belittling me all the time. 
And as for hiding it from you, well, it's not like I intentionally kept it a secret. It's just that I didn't think you would react with any empathy or understanding. You're always quick to criticize and make things worse. Oh please, spare me the drama. You think I would have solved the problem if you had told me? Let's be real here. You spread negativity and complaints to everyone else in the family. How could I trust you to handle the situation appropriately? It's just plain gross. You know what, Elise? I've seriously reached my limit with your constant judgment and complete lack of empathy. I honestly can't understand why you harbor so much prejudice towards me. Is it because of my background? It's downright evil of you to act like such a monster. Oh, you bet I have my reasons. And wow, you're dealing with a skin illness now. Well, that's karma coming back to bite you, isn't it? Maybe you'll have to live with that illness for the rest of your life. Perhaps it's some sort of divine punishment for being such a naughty daughter-in-law. Maybe God knows exactly how mischievous you are and just decided to teach you a lesson. Hold on a second. I can't believe what I'm hearing. How can you possibly be happy about me suffering from an illness? Are you for real right now? Is this the kind of person you truly are? Oh, spare me the dramatics, Jenny. Don't act like you're all innocent and shocked. You've constantly pushed my buttons and made my life difficult. So forgive me if I don't shed in tears over your skin condition. This goes beyond buttons being pushed, Elise. It's about basic human decency. Regardless of our differences and disagreements, nobody deserves to be happy about someone else's suffering. It's just plain cruel. And you should know that. Look, Jenny, I may have said some harsh things, but you're no angel either. All I do is for your own good and for the sake of this family also. I'm teaching you how to be a real daughter-in-law. And what did you do to repay me? You've made snide remarks, disrespected me, and created tension within the family. So don't act like you're the victim here. What? One week later. Hey there, Jenny. Oh, hey, Lisa. It's so great to see you. And let me tell you, your medicine has been a game changer for me. I'm feeling so much better now, thanks to you. I seriously lucked out having my best friend as my personal doctor. It's like a dream come true. Ah, don't mention it. We're not just friends, we're practically family. We do anything for each other, right? So, really, it was nothing. I'm just glad I could help. It breaks my heart to think of you suffering from this illness all alone without any support. Well, yeah, I guess, but it's not really that big of a deal. Wait, hold on a second. Did I just hear you say it's not a big deal? Come on, Jenny. You know better than anyone the kind of challenges you face with your in-laws, especially your mother-in-law. Is she even human? Ugh. You have no idea, Lisa. Dealing with my mother-in-law has been a constant struggle. It's like she lacks basic human empathy or understanding. She's always criticizing, judging, and making me feel like I'm never good enough. It's exhausting. I can't even imagine how tough that must be. No one deserves to be treated that way, especially by someone who is supposed to be family. It's infuriating to see how she treats you. You deserve so much better. Thank you. It means a lot to have your support. Sometimes I wonder if I'm overreacting if I'm overreacting or if I'm being too sensitive. But hearing you validate my feelings helps me realize that it's not just in my head. It's a real problem. You are not overreacting. Your feelings are valid, 
and you have every right to stand up for yourself. No one should have to endure such toxic behavior, especially from someone who is supposed to love and support them. Just know that I'm here for you, through thick and thin. You're not alone in this. You have no idea how much that means to me. Having a friend like you by my side makes it a little easier to navigate through all the chaos. I'm grateful for your unwavering support and friendship. And I'm grateful to have you in my life. We'll get through this together, one step at a time. Just remember, you're strong, resilient, and deserving of all the love and respect in the world. Don't let anyone make you feel otherwise. Oh, yeah, I forgot, the reason I texted you is that your mother-in-law asked me about you yesterday. She asked about your illness. Wait, what? What are you talking about? She asked about my illness? Are you for real? I can't believe my ears. I thought she would never care about me, even if I was dead. I'm curious about that, too. She's not the kind of person that could care much about others, especially you, her daughter-in-law. But she still knew you went to my place for checkup, and even asked something about that illness also. That's kind of, you know, weird. Don't you think? Yeah, it's really weird, I have to admit. I mean, let's be real, my mother-in-law showing so much concern for me? It's just not like her at all. I can't help but feel like there's something hidden behind her fake kindness. By the way, Lisa, did she ask a lot about me? Nah, not really. Just some basic information, nothing out of the ordinary. Did she ask about any specific precautions or things I should be aware of during the treatment process? Nope, not a word about that. She mainly asked about the name of the medicine and stuff like that. I didn't hear her mention anything about your treatment plan or what you should do. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, Lisa, I hate to ask, but could you do me a little favor? I have this gut feeling that my mother-in-law is up to something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I need you to help me figure out her evil plan, if there is one. Can you please help me? Of course, Jenny. Anything for you. You know I've got your back. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My whole life feels like it's in your hands right now. I don't know what I would do without your support. Please, find a way to uncover her intentions and help me out. Don't worry, Jenny. I'll have a little chat with her and see if I can get any information. Trust me, she may act all high and mighty, but she doesn't know a thing about medicine. We'll figure this out together. Are you sure about that? I mean, she can be quite cunning when she wants to be. Absolutely. Have a little faith in me, Jenny. I've got some tricks up my sleeve. I'll do my best to get to the bottom of this and protect you. You're like family to me and I won't let anything happen to you. That's such a relief to hear. I don't know how to thank you enough, Lisa. Seriously, I owe you big time for this. You're an amazing friend. Ah, don't mention it. Friends look out for each other, right? We're in this together. Just focus on taking care of yourself, and leave the detective work to me. We'll get to the bottom of this and put your worries to rest. Three weeks later. Jenny. Hey, wake up. I need to tell you something right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. What's going on? Wow, you really look weak. Are you feeling okay? I'm genuinely worried about you, girl. That's why I went to see your doctor to ask about your condition. It's such a shame that you have to go through this horrible illness. 
Well, I appreciate your concern, but how do you even know who my private doctor is? Have you been secretly following me or something? That's kind of creepy, Elise. What? No, not at all. It's just that we've known each other for so long, and your health is a big deal. I wanted to make sure you were getting the best care possible. I didn't mean to invade your privacy or anything like that. You're my daughter-in-law, of course you understand that, don't you? No, I don't think you understand. I'm not buying into your manipulative ways anymore. Remember all those times you treated me like dirt, constantly making me feel like I didn't belong? And now suddenly you're acting like you care about me? It's just so two-faced and hard to believe. But what really gets to me is how you found out about my private doctor. I never shared that information with anyone, not even you. There's no way you could have known about that place. Why couldn't I find out? Tell me. And yes, I did follow you to that place. But what's the big deal? What's wrong with a mother-in-law caring about her daughter-in-law? Why are you making such a fuss about it? It's honestly ridiculous, don't you think? Instead of being grateful and saying thanks to your mother-in-law? What? This is beyond stalking. You're violating my privacy. All these actions of yours are damaging my private life, and it's not okay. Oh, come on, Jenny. Don't overreact. What about the cereal bowl I just made for you? It's packed with nutrients, and you really should eat it right now. It's best to have a good breakfast in the morning, and I truly believe it will help in curing your illness. Seriously, Elise? You think a bowl of cereal is going to cure my illness? This is not about breakfast or nutrition. It's about boundaries and respect for my personal space. I can't believe you're trying to deflect the issue by offering me cereal. It's not going to solve the problem at hand. And on top of that, you've been forcing me to eat your cereal for weeks now. It feels like you're disregarding my preferences and imposing your choices on me. What's the point in doing this? It's not helping our relationship, and it's certainly not helping my health. Look, I understand that you might not appreciate my approach, but I'm doing this for your own good. The doctor specifically recommended this kind of cereal for your illness. I bought it and made it for you because I care about your well-being. I appreciate your concern, Elise, but it's not just about the cereal. It's about the bigger picture. I need you to respect my boundaries and understand that I have the right to make decisions about my own health. It's not about whether the cereal is a good or not. It's about autonomy and allowing me to have a say in my own treatment. Well, excuse me for trying to do something nice for you. I'm just trying to be supportive, and all you can do is criticize. I don't see why you're making such a big deal out of it. It's just a bowl of cereal. Elise, it's not about the cereal itself. It's about the fact that you're not listening to me and disregarding my boundaries. I understand that you're trying to be helpful, but it's important to respect my autonomy and involve me in the decision-making process. Let's have a conversation about my treatment and explore different options together. Fine, if you don't want my help, then so be it. I'll just leave you to deal with your illness on your own. Don't come crying to me when things don't go well. I was just trying to do something nice, but I guess that doesn't matter to you. Elise, I'm not rejecting your help. I'm just asking for a more respectful and collaborative approach. I appreciate your intentions, but let's work together as a team and find a solution that respects my autonomy. While also considering medical advice and professional opinions. Yeah, okay, fine. I don't care. Just eat your cereal and go. Three weeks later. Jenny? Hey, how's it going? 
Are you almost back to your old self after dealing with that illness? I can't even wrap my head around it. I mean, seriously, how did this happen? It's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I'd say I'm on the road to recovery. Feeling pretty optimistic, actually. So hopefully, I'll be back to normal in no time. No way. This can't be happening. It's just not possible. It's not the way things are supposed to go, you know? It's like, it's just not right. Okay, hold up a sec. What's going on here? Oh, man, I totally forgot to mention this earlier. I wanted to say a big thank you for all the cereal you've been making for me. Seriously, it's been a game changer. I've been feeling better and better each day. No, no, it's not about the cereal. It's something else. Ugh, it's kind of hard to put into words. Oh, come on, spill the beans already. What's eating at you? Is this about your wild and crazy plan to take me down? I gotta give you credit, though, I see right through your sneaky ways. I'm no pushover, you know? Wait, what? You actually figured it out? How? Well, here's the thing. That doctor who's been treating me. Yeah, she happens to be one of my closest friends. And let me tell you, she spilled all the tea, including the fact that you've been poking around, asking about my illness. But here's the kicker, it's impossible for you to have done that. So, naturally, I got super curious about what you were up to. That's when I decided to have a little fun. I told my friend that if you happened to ask about my diet, she would totally mess with you and say that cereal is absolutely not good for my health. I mean, let's be real here, I know you well enough to know that you're not exactly a nutrition expert. And wouldn't you know it, you fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. But hey, let me take a moment to genuinely thank you for taking the time every day to make me cereal. It might have been based on a little white lie, but I truly appreciate the effort and the thoughtfulness behind it. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. This can't be right. Your doctor shouldn't have lied to me. It's just not fair. I've been trying my best to get you out of this house. And now it feels like all my efforts have been in vain. I can't believe this. Oh my gosh, seriously? You actually hate me that much? I can't even believe my eyes right now. You're capable of being that cunning and heartless? Wow. So let me get this straight, your one and only wish is for me to be dead? Is that what this is all about? How could you treat another human being this way? We're talking about someone's life here, don't you realize that? And you're still willing to go to such lengths just to get rid of me? Yes. You have no idea how much I've despised you from the moment you stepped foot into this house and messed up my family. It's like you have this insatiable desire to take over every inch of this place. I will never, ever forgive you for what you've done. Is that it? Seriously, you're making a huge mistake here. Just because you hate me doesn't mean you have the right to end my life. That's not hatred, that's pure evil. And let me tell you, you're starting to reveal your true colors. You're nothing more than a sly monster, lurking in the shadows. What? How dare you say that about your mother-in-law? I can't believe you got the nerve to do that. And you're so crooked to realize my scheme and destroy that. Ugh, you, you're driving me mad. Well, is that so? Then it would be my pleasure. You'll be stuck with me forever, so don't even think of a way to get rid of that. Old woman. Ugh. You evil brat. I'm still your mother-in-law. 
Just remember that. Oh, please. Spare me the dramatics, Elise. How dare I say that about my dear mother-in-law? Well, let's see. Maybe it's because you've been plotting against me and trying to bring harm into my life. It's not like I just randomly came up with those accusations, you know? And here you are, all bent out of shape because I saw through your twisted little scheme and managed to unravel it. Well, guess what? I'm not the naive fool you thought I was. Your deceitful ways were no match for my sharp instincts. You're driving me mad? Ha! <laughs> the feeling is mutual, my dear. But guess what? You're stuck with me, and there's nothing you can do to get rid of me. So you might as well get used to my presence, because I'm not going anywhere, old woman. Jenny. Jenny. After the intense argument, Mrs. Elise was so furious that she couldn't speak to me anymore. She eventually gave up her plans to physically harm me, but she continued to express her deep-seated hatred whenever we crossed paths. To be honest, I couldn't care less about her attitude because, let's face it, what could she really do about it? Luckily, my husband was truly kind-hearted, and our relationship remained strong despite all the chaos. When he found out about my escape from his mother's toxic behavior, he was genuinely shocked and immediately decided to sever all ties with her. He couldn't bear to see her wicked face anymore, so he courageously made the decision to kick her out of our home. With no other options, she had to find a small, miserable rented room on the outskirts of the city. Three years later, I heard rumors that she had fallen seriously ill due to the terrible living conditions she had subjected herself to. It's hard not to feel some sympathy, especially since I had my own struggles with illness in the past. But then again, as they say, karma has its own way of dealing with those who so evil. It seems that Mrs. Elise is now facing the consequences of her actions, isn't she?